Welcome to React Quickly. This series of screencasts walks you through the project from the book React Quickly. In this video, we are focusing on the project password from the chapter number 7. This is the password widget. First of all, I wanted to show you how it looks in action. So we have this panel with two input boxes. First one is the uh, input box for the password, and the second one is the checkbox that shows password. Otherwise, it's hidden. So it works like this. And then we have a strength meter that automatically detects, according to the specified criteria, how strong is your password. For example, it must be more than six characters, and this condition is satisfied. If I delete two characters, now it's just five characters. This is not satisfied the criteria, and the save button is disabled. So once all of this criteria is specified, is satisfied, all five of them, we can proceed to the next step. And uh, as you type uppercase special character, now we need a number there. The strength meter is updated automatically. Now you can click save and that will save the password when you're using this widget in your real application. So, the reason there is a generate button is because the human-generated passwords, the password generated by humans, are not truly random, because our brain follows certain patterns. So, let me uncheck this box. So, once I click generate, Right now, none of the criteria is satisfied. All of the criteria will be satisfied because uh, that's how the generate function works. It knows about the criteria. And then uh, it will also show you the password so you can uh, remember it. So, for example, this one, or maybe you don't like it. This one is uh, a little bit lengthier. So, the length varies, but the criteria is always satisfied, is always met, and you can proceed to the save. Now, right now it's enabled. So, this is the demo. Now let's look how it's implemented. First of all, I wanted to show you the folder structure. If you look at the password folder, there is a underscore underscore tests underscore underscore folder. This is the folder for the Jest test runner. This is the test runner that we'll be using, and I have two tests in there, generate-password-test.js and password.test.js. Then there is a CSS folder. It's very simple. It's uh, just a bootstrap.css file there, and I can show it's version 3.3.5. I'm using a special bootstrap theme. Uh, you don't have to use anything special, just a standard bootstrap 3 will do. And then there is the JS folder, which uh, has the compiled JavaScript files, compiled from the JSX. I'm also using uh, Gulp, and I'm using a Gulp map plugin that will enable us to see the proper lines in the corresponding JSX files. So that's the output that the Gulp will generate. And if you haven't worked with Gulp, it's a nice command line tool and it's a nice plugin if you use something else that uh, you can use programmatically to uh, create your build processes. In this example, I'm using it to compile JSX. Speaking of the JSX, I have script.jsx and it's very small. All I'm doing here, I'm uh, rendering my password component into the element with ID password, which I define in index.html. And then I have five attributes that are special. They're special names that I use in my password component. But the idea here is that you can remove them. If I remove special, then in my component, I would not have that condition. So basically it allows you to customize this password widget any way you want. You can add more uh, conditions, you can remove conditions, and you can come up with multiple, multiple different scenarios of how strong your password must be. 
And um, we also have this package.json file. Didn't have it before, but right now we need it because we have a lot of dependencies which we install via npm. And uh, there are two categories of dependencies that I'm using here. One is dev dependencies and one is normal dependencies. So in dev dependencies, I have jest, react and react add-ons. And then in dependencies, I have gulp, babel and other gulp plugins. Probably gulp should also belong to the dev dependencies and uh, maybe react. Uh, you want to put it in uh, normal dependencies. The idea here is that when you do npm install dash dash production, the dev dependencies does not, they do not get installed. But for this example, this package.json works. The most important thing here is that you need to use exactly the same version. So I'm using React 0.14.0. So don't use 0.13 or 0.15 use exact versions, otherwise I cannot guarantee that this example will work without modifications. Then I have some metadata like author name licenses, it's, it's not really that important. What's important is these tests. So to run the test you would start, you would do it with npm test or jest. So npm test will launch the jest command. Also I have build which will launch gulp build and I have dev which will run gulp. For build and dev you need to use npm run dev and npm run build. And I'll show you later what they actually do and how they look in action. So let's take a quick look at index.html. It's rather a small example. I will just give it to you as it is. We include our libraries react, react dom, and then generate passwords. That's the library that will generate random passwords. Now you can use uh, something like Browserify and use npm react modules, uh, but I decided to keep it simple and just download the files. I think they're here, they're in the JS folder. So as in the previous example, just download the browser files and uh, point to them from the index.html file. And then I have this container with ID password and I have two includes. One is for password and one is for script. So what it does, password is a separate component. If I just include password.js, it's not going to do anything. I'm just defining the component. And then a script, I'm actually rendering that component. So why did I split? because I need that component to be separate so I can test it with just with my test runner. So let's actually take a look at a few of those tests. So I'm in a password.test.js file and we're all fans of TDD and BDD, right? So before we actually start implementing our password component, let's go ahead and write a few tests for it. So just, uh, it has this automatic mocking feature. And if you don't want to mock something, for example, like this password.js, you can turn it off or you can use auto mock off to disable auto mocks completely. That's what I'm doing here, but I have in the comment another option as well. Then describe an IT or it. It's very similar to Jasmine or Mocha if you've worked with them. It's a BDD behavioral driven development type of language. And inside of it changes after click. So the password changes after click. I'm using test utils. So that's coming from React add-ons test utils. That's a backend NPM module. I'm using require, which is a Node.js and CommonJS style. So I get test utils. It's uh, one of the React add-ons. And then I'm also uh, getting React itself and React DOM. That's why we included them in package.json. So even in our application, we're using browser files. Here for the testing, we're using NPM modules. 
Then I don't like to type too much, so fd equals react-dom.find-dom, just a shortcut, nothing complex here. Find dom node is a function, just keep that in mind, it's not an object. Then I'm requiring generate password and I'm requiring password. So I'm using common JS style. What it will do, it will give me those objects in this context. So now test utils it has this function render into document. It's very similar to React DOM dot render, but it's not the actual render. It's kind of a fake render. We will have that object in the password variable, which I define on line 13. And remember those attributes in uh, script.jsx. That's how I'm, I'm passing. I'm not. I decided not to use JSX in the tests. So this is plain. Uh, JavaScript with the React classes and methods. So I'm just passing the object with uh, the strength. So I have five strength criteria for my strength meter. Now I'm defining var rules equal test utils dot this long, long function name. I'm not going to even pronounce it. Basically, the idea here, it works like jQuery. We have that component, now we're getting something inside of that component. That something is li, or list element. So I know on my page I want to have that list of criteria, so I'm checking for that. I'm, I'm using find DOM node, and rules at zero must have that exact same string must have at least one uppercase. So that's criteria number one, uppercase. Then I have another generate button equals find render in DOM component with class. So I know there should be a render button with class gen generate dash. And then I'm expecting the second rule to have some text. Now test utils have a way to click on buttons, so I'm using dot simulate dot click and I'm passing generate button. So that will simulate the click. And now I will expect the second element, the rule 1, to have strike, which is the strike through. So remember, when the criteria is not satisfied, it's just text, and then if criteria is satisfied, it's strike. So basically what happened? First, the criteria is not satisfied, I'm clicking on the generate button, I have a good password, all criteria is satisfied, but I'm checking only for the second. You can expand this test to check for other conditions as well, but uh, it's good for now as it is. I'm just checking that the second condition is satisfied, lowercase. So now let's write some tests for the generate password library. It's not really uh, React component or li uh, it's more like a library to generate the password that can be used anywhere but I still want to use just to write this unit tests and it's a good practice for writing just tests so I'm declaring password password 2 and the pattern using regex regex is a great way to specify certain patterns and I'm using a lot of backslashes because those are special characters. Basically I have that huge string, 8 to 16 characters with the numbers and special characters and punctuation marks and digits of course. Again I'm using describe method generate password it returns a generated password. So the idea here is that uh, we're going to import this module, invoke a method on it, and then see that the password 
that this function returns matches our pattern. This way we know that this method is solid, it's good, at least for one time. Okay, so password equals generate password, we get in the password number one, and we're expecting that password to match the pattern. So far so good. Okay, so let's write uh, another suite. Now we're getting different values, so just to make sure that uh, password, that generate password returns is not hard-coded, we'll get another value and compare them. Compare the second with the first value. So password2 equals generate password. Expect password2 to match pattern, obviously needs to match that pattern, but also it needs to be different from the first password. Okay, great. So one interesting thing here is that I'm getting this uh, variable globally once I require this module. So you will see how it's implemented later in the generate-password.js file. This is because they're uh, front-end modules, but here we're using them as the back-end modules as well to test them. Okay, so let me show you generate password module. I'm not going to go really deep into it. Just a few things to notice here. It's a front-end module, so we're using window.generatePassword, but uh, Jest is smart enough that it gets it and it puts into the Node.js as global. So that's why we are able to use this function generate password only after using require. And then we have few conditions, for example, like okay, uppercase, we're getting num we're getting characters from this set. So you can customize your uh, randomly generated password here and you can change the special symbols and the numbers as well. And I didn't write this, all credits go to these people. I just found the script online on Stack Overflow. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. We shuffle the numbers at the end. Uh, so the good thing about this module is that uh, it gets us the exact number of, for example, I want exactly one lowercase, exactly one number case, right? And then we fill the rest with... Uh, different um, with the characters of different length with a string of different length so this way our our strength meter is rather complex so this way this module will work for that as well 